Hey, don't forget that there's still a shower episode that is left to finish. And, well, this is pretty much the thing that I have to say about this. It's not episode 4! Thank you, thank you, thank you, I really love everything. Even though I'd say this level is probably the poorest level of the shower, I don't care. It's not episode 4, so that means it's fun. <sighs> oh, the relief. So anyway, yeah. This is level 6 into the shower episode, and it's entitled Ride'em Cowboy. Because this level has a million of anti-gravitational discs, which are floating everywhere, a whole lot of moving platforms, a whole lot of stuff that moves and will throw you off. And also, I gotta say that, well, this level is all about cowboys, mainly for one reason, which is pretty much the reason why I hate this level. There's only two missile weapons in the entire level, and we already picked up one of them. So, essentially, this is a bullet weapon only level, pairing all of the missile ammo that you will be lucky enough to find from dead guards. And of course, you have to be playing on hard or crazy man difficulty in order for this to even take effect. But essentially, you're gonna be using the machine gun during the entire level, which makes things go boring really, really fast. Oh, and before I forget, this level was made by Joe Sigler, which is a second of the levels that he made for the shower episode, the other one being Wall to Wall, which was a fantastic level, but unfortunately, this level really doesn't match the same criteria of quality. And we're gonna see one of the reasons why, because this level has really a couple of incredibly stupid design decisions. You'd think that you'd have to go through here, but guess what? You don't even fit through here, so you have to find another way to go here. We have to go over those columns and... Oh, you fucking son of a bitch! Oh. Yeah, there's only one moving platform which rides around the entire room, and if you miss your ride, guess what? You have to wait for about an entire minute, circling around the whole place in order to finally get to the place where you have to go. I really don't know why there wasn't more than one set of those moving platforms, because yeah, it's really not fun to wait for that long just in order to get to anywhere else, but at least we're never gonna have to do it anymore. Now remember, whenever you're involved into a firefight, hide behind the table, because this is your best means in order to evade enemy fire. You don't even have to duck underneath it, just stand behind it and you'll be safe. Believe me, have a little faith in tables, please. So anyway, make sure that you don't miss this little touch plate over here because it's gonna open up a secret area that will lead us to the extra life that we've seen in the beginning of the level. But before we do so, we have to go through the main theme of the level, riding onto those little staircases of disc in order to get to places. You're gonna see that a whole lot into this level. But yeah, honestly, this is not really why I hate this level. My main complaint about this level obviously is the lack of missile ammo, but having stuff like that doesn't really help neither. So here we go, another extra life into our pocket. So we need to get over here, but how do we get into this area? No, we cannot go through the obvious opening, you have to push a column instead. Why? Hell, I remember when I first played this game, I didn't even know that columns could be any pushable. I know that there were secret push walls, but push columns, however, was an entirely different story, so... I honestly don't remember how I even made it through this level when I was a kid, and I'm pretty sure that many people also had problems with this one level, if only because of those columns. All because you're obligated to push a column out of the way in order to... Uh, to beat the level. So essentially I found two reasons why I don't like this level. Columns and finally no missile weapons at all. Some sections in this level can be pretty tricky, especially if you're attacked from all sides considering that, well, you have absolutely no weapon to defend yourself. With, uh, oh, or sometimes the enemies can give you a hand. What the hell even happened there? Oh my god. Yeah, I know for sure, however, that it certainly was not pretty at all. 
also we're gonna have another key to find but nah we don't really have to find it considering that this room only leads to a bonus area but well we're still gonna find it anyway because this is the kind of things that we do in Dodo's videos doing actually something in addition to its problem of having way too few missile weapons in Total of All, this level also makes things worse by also being the longest level into the entire shareware. But, believe it or not, the level was supposed to be a whole lot larger than this, but because of the engine limitations and all of this, uh, Joe Ziegler was basically ordered to cut the level by about half of its usual content because there were way too many enemies and probably way too many discs as well so I'm pretty sure that having way too much stuff on the onto the actual level will make it so that the game will crash and yeah why are there two pistols out there do I look like some sort of freaking octopus I do not have three arms so I cannot shoot three weapons at the same time well, I could always dream so, but even then I'm pretty sure that you will not be able to aim for the shit with this setup. So that touch plate that we triggered and which made it so that there were a whole lot of walls moving all around the place is actually somewhat treacherous because if you decide to hide around the touch plate like uh, you don't have any kind of worry in the world, you end up being stuck because there, all of the walls are gonna close until you and there will be no escape. Uh, oh god, and there's not gonna be any escape from here if I keep getting shot by this guy with a bazooka. So in short, I'm really glad that Tom Hall ordered Joe Sigler to make this level shorter because, yeah, if there was the same amount of missile ammo that there were into the initial version of this map, that probably would have been a really painful level. If only because there's just way too many enemies for one machine gun. And if you think that there was a lot of enemies earlier, you haven't seen anything yet. Once that we press this touch plate over here, we're gonna see a lot of enemies. Although thankfully you do not have to fight them, instead it's something else. Yep, it's a human bridge, but there also is a mechanical part to it. Alright, we're making it, we're making it! There we go. Yeah, now we won't have a worry in the world. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good thing that we didn't have to spend any kind of effort actually killing those enemies because otherwise this would have been a painful multi-color bridge of white or gray if you prefer and finally olive green. I really have to say I'm really deceived by the turnover of all of the bazookas that were dropped from Death Guard. With that many enemies I'd expect a whole lot more than two bazookas, but hey, at least this trip was worth a one-up as well. Then the silver key, which is right over here, which kind of blends in into the background, if only because the key is in the same color than the wall. But don't worry, missing this key will not impact this level into any kind of way, considering that all that it allows you to is, well, it leads you to a completely worthless secret room. Hey, remember how fun it was riding those platforms earlier? Well, it still is fun, believe me. Uh, yeah, I'm a horrible liar and I'm really sorry. Okay, so we only have one final room to go before we're finally done with the level, but we're gonna pay a visit to the Silver Key area in order to see what the fuss was all about. What is the big payoff for coming all the way back here? Well, you surely know what you're gonna get. An extra 1-up as well than a chance of having a missile weapon, but knowing my luck, I'm probably not gonna have any of them. Yep, two life items and some food. So we're almost done with the entire level, and yet we didn't see any single missile weapon yet, apart from the ones that were dropped by missile weapons, and yeah, this is certainly the weirdest part of the entire level. What is this supposed to be? A miniature replica of Sherwood's forest with the merry-go-round people that go around in order to kill you? I'm really not sure that I grasped the metaphor here yet. Now they're sneaking in into the trees. Charlie, 5,000 kilometers an hour. Enemies at 5 o'clock. Shoot them in the face. Oh god, I really believe that this place is getting to me. I better get out of here before all of the incoming brain damage is irreparable. So here we go, that was the second missile weapon of the entire level. 
at the final room where we've pretty much killed every enemy that was left until the entire level. And now I finally got my ride on time. No waiting this time around! So now we can pretend that we're a bird on paradise. And now we're gonna finally glide our way to victory as the exit is nearby. Only one guy left and we're finally done with this level. It was about time. I honestly have a hard time believing that this level was longer than it already is because as it was, this level was still too long, but hey, let's see it in the bright side. It's not episode 4. So that's pretty much it. So yeah, Joe Segler pretty much signs all of his levels. But what about HUP? Well, that stands for Under Protest. Yeah, that's his way of protesting that his level was cut in half. And I'm honestly thankful for that. And just in case that you were wondering about him signing all of his levels, yeah, that's the map of 8 Ways to Hell, and we can also see his name being signed here. Every single of his levels are like that, or pretty much all of them. So, coming up next, the final level of the shareware. Boom, boom, boom.